Good morning, and we're here at Warner Park in St. Kitts and Nevis for round four of the West Indies Women's T20 Blaze. This contest will be between Trinidad and Tobago and Jamaica. We're joined by match referee Gums. Who has the toss? Steph has the toss. Heads is the ball. It's the tails. Jamaica. Jamaica is one the toss, Steph. What are you going to do? We're going to have a ball. Any reason for that? Yeah, it seems to be like a, a little bit of weather around um, and I think some moisture might be in the pitch so we might try to utilize that early. Now you've spoken about moisture. Your spinners in particular have come to the fore. What has been key for that? I think it's just putting the ball in the right area and um, yeah, I think the spinning group is quite experienced too so that has helped. And there also seems to be a bit of middle order problems, especially when you guys are faced with spinners. Can we expect a different brand of cricket today, especially for your top order? Well, I hope so. I mean, I don't know why we seem to have that problem, to be honest. But um, yeah, because we have capable batters and our middle order is quite strong. So yeah, hopefully today just come, you know, we come together with everything. Finally, who's out today? Um, we play the same 11 from last game. Okay, thank you. All the best. Thanks. Karishma, same thing to bat first. Had you wanted to ask, what would you have done? You would have had a goal as well. Um, who's out today? Selena is out and Sugrim is back in. How is Sugrim? We know she was struggling with an injury last game. She's fine. Man. She She's able to play today, so that's a good thing for us. What do you think is important if you're going to come at Trumps against this Jamaica side? Yeah, I mean, obviously we have to put some runs on the board. Um, I know that's an area of concern for us, but I think the girls are really ready and confident today about this game. All right, thank you and all the best to your side. News from the toss here at Warner Park in St. Kitts. Jamaica have won the toss and they've opted to fuel first. Good morning and welcome to Warner Park in St. Kitts and Nevis for round four of the West Indies Women's T20 Blaze. It's a contest between Trinidad and Tobago women and Jamaica women. Jamaica women sit at, on the top of the standings. Trinidad and Tobago women, they are in third. Reminder at the toss, Jamaica women won the toss and opted to field first. It's an unchanged 11 for this Jamaica side, Trinidad and Tobago. They have replaced Steffi Sue Grimm, who has clearly recovered from a niggle she was carrying in the last game. She's back in for Celine O'Neill. I'm joined by Stacey Ann Adams. Yes, good morning, Shakira, and hello to everyone out there. It's an important contest, especially for Trinidad and Tobago women. If they win this game, they can get to second place, I think, because Jamaica might still be on top with run rate, but still a pretty important game for them. Yeah, Jamaica women, remember, they won that CG United Super 50 Cup and they've started this T20 competition very well. Haven't lost a game as yet in the three completed games. And they got bonus, point in that f bonus points in that first encounter as well. Yes, they've actually chased in all of their games so far. And so not surprising, the captain, she won the toss and decided she'll chase again today. So just sticking to what they know, sticking to what has worked for them so far. Do, would you have bowled had you won the toss if you were Stephanie Taylor? Well, it's working, so <laughs> why not? <laughs> also, she mentioned at the toss the fact that there was some rain around and she felt as though perhaps there was some moisture in the pitch. And she'll be hoping that if there's any moisture, her premier fast bowler, Chanel Henry, can take full advantage of it and get into this train down to Tobago middle order very early. Yeah, and it's a different strip being used as well. Um, strip, the strip closest to the um, electronic scoreboard so the two openers for Trinidad and Tobago Sunel Sao and Brittany Cooper and she's starting with spin it appears and I saw what yeah no surprises there it has been Watts and Chanel Henry opening the bowling for this Jamaica side throughout the tournament um, once I think Henry would have bowled the first over. I think that was the first game since then. Watts has been bowling the first over. Perhaps because Jamaica wants to bowl that last over and ask 
the batters, there are lots of right-handed batters in this Trinidad and Tobago lineup, and they're asking the batters to hit into the wing for that final 20th over. Yeah, so the two fielders out, mid-wicket and long on. A slip to start. Stefani Taylor herself a slip. It will be Watts to Soul for the first delivery. Skates through, taken by the keeper Rashida Williams. Yeah, a bit of bong to start there from Watts. Play and miss again. Her bat speed is going to be very important facing up to Watts on this surface in particular. Especially with the new ball. She does bowl a bit faster, but because the surface has gone a bit of water, it is going to skate through a bit. Remember in that last game that Trinidad and Tobago played against Wayward Islands women, so was dismissed without scoring. She was dismissed by a sprinter as well, albeit a left arm spinner in Zeta James. Trend and Tobago women chased in that encounter. And it was a very close contest. They were eventually able to get over the line. It's a maiden to start proceedings. It's a very good start for Jamaica. Chanel Sunel Sao unable to get anything away in that over, but the changes of changes of pace from Watts was pretty impressive in that over, as well as her length. She mixed things up quite well. And Sao wasn't able to get anything away. So a brilliant start for Jamaica. Yeah, Trinidad and Tobago women, they've struggled all throughout the tournament with their batting in particular. They were only chasing 81 in that game against the Wimmer Islands women. And they almost lost it. I remember in that game, Fletcher, captain of that Wimmer's team, opted to open bowling with two spinners. Trinidad and Tobago women only got up to five for two at the end of that power play. They'll be hoping for a much better start here. Hoping to post. Starts with a dot, Henry. They'll be hoping to post a total that can challenge this Jamaica side. And I think if they get in excess of 120, it could be a very keen contest. The Jamaica Middle Order has struggled in particular when they've had to face spinners. You know, Trinidad and Tobago, they have a plethora of spinners to choose from in their lineup. So Henry, who's the most successful bowler for Jamaica this year in this format, she has six wickets to her name. Picked up a four for as well. Yeah, what she's done well so far, Chanel Henry, is the fact that she's been able to get some movement with the new ball. So she's caused problems for both right and left handers. She swung the ball back into left handers and away from right handers. Deep third and deep cover. Her two fielders on the boundary. Loud appeal, probably pitched outside leg stump. Not given by umpire Maria Abbott. Yes, there you go again. Just this one pitched up and rightly said it's pitched outside the leg stump. Swinging back in, so she's getting some movement early on, Chanel Henry. And the captain has used her quite well also. When she recognizes that she's getting swing, she Ops to give her that extra over in the power play as well. Driven firmly to Stefani Taylor at mid-off. She fumbles, allows the first runs in this innings so far. So bring, bring Cooper off the mark. Bring Chanel so into strike. Hey, you talked about Chanel so 
you know, and her bat speed against Watts. This will be an interesting contest. She'll have to get that front foot out as, as much as possible also, especially to that swinging delivery. Yeah, Henry will have to bowl very tight lanes to Sow as well. She does late room outside the all stump. Just around there, perhaps a bit fuller. But yeah, another reason that Stefani Taylor has been able to use that extra over from Chanel Henry is because of the number of bowlers she has in this lineup. The spinners has come, have come to the fore for her, but she also has two other pacers. Bit of room given. Driven uppishly to the fielder, coming off the boundary at deep cover. So two runs from Henry's first over. Trade on the Tobago women, two without loss after two. Yeah, and, and added to the spinners, Shidi Nation, the, the surprise package for Trinidad and for Jamaica. She has four wickets as well in this T20 Blaze tournament. So she has been pretty handy for Stephanie Taylor in this format. <coughs> Firmly driven to McLean coming off the boundary at long on. Yeah, so the options for Taylor, besides Watts and Henry, our nation, as you already mentioned, like Stefani Taylor herself, Kate Wilmot, Nisha Ann Waysom. They also have young Bryce, Abigail Bryce, who's supposed to be an all-rounder. You don't think she's bold yet in the competition. Slight misfield by Wilmot, an extra cover, allows an easy single. Trinidad has to be careful not to get stuck here. I think they play that sort of game quite well. Uh, you know, they're able to pick up singles early on. So if they can just tap into that, especially in the, in, the, in the beginning of the innings and in the middle period, they can well see themselves getting a formidable total against this Jamaican unit. But it's very important not to get stuck early on. They're currently four without loss in the third over. Yeah, I think the problem for this train down at Tobago side has been that they haven't gotten anything from their middle order. They've opted to go with Brittany Cooper at the top of the order for this T20 blaze. A chance, chance, and she finally holds it. Stephanie Taylor, one, two, three juggles, and she's able to hold on. Chanel So goes for just two runs. Train down at Tobago, we made now four for one. It's certainly not the start that Trinidad and Tobago would have been looking for. She troubled her in that first over, Vanessa Watts, and this occasion looking for the cut too close, one might say, and Stephanie T Taylor, after three tries, finally hold on to that. He's a brilliant fielder, Taylor, and Watts pick up that first wicket for her. Very important strike in the, in the innings early. And yeah, Taylor eventually was able to hang on to that. An early breakthrough for Vanessa Watts and this Jamaica women's side. So winning the toss, opting to bowl first, and so far everything has gone to plan. It brings to the crease young Janaba Joseph on the back of a 40. Yes, Joseph has the most runs for Trinidad and Tobago in this form, and she had 6 65, um, especially owing to that 40 odd in the second innings against, in the second match, sorry, against third match, sorry. The second game, she, she went without scoring. Well, the first game, she went without scoring. The second game, she made 22. And, in, and the third game is when she really came to the party for Trinidad and Tobago. She, has a, she got a promotion. At this time, last game, Salini Samaru came in at third. So, Janaba early in to spin a watch. Beaten outside the Austin. Just playing for turn on that occasion. Joseph, yeah. remember this is a new ball, so not too often you'll see it actually turn. It's getting it to skid and slide on at the moment, Vanessa Watts. So 
So two wicket, two runs and a wicket from what second over. Turned down to be a go women four for one at the end of three. She's looking to play it quite late, Sunel Sao, but that slip was always going to be in play for that type of shot. Yeah, Joseph about five in that last game against the Wingwood Islands. So women got to 43 and took the team over the line. It was very important not. She was given a few opportunities, but she made the most of them. Young Janaba Joseph. Straight turn to the field. That sharp may wake it. Chance for a run out. Joseph makes it safely. Yeah, what she did well in that innings compared to the rest of the top order batters, to the spinners, she was prepared to use her feet and she did so quite well. And she used the option of going over the infield also. So I'm wondering if she'll have a similar template here to the Jamaican. The, the fast bowler was introduced pretty late in that inning. So she, was, she faced a number of spinners before facing a fast bowling option. We eventually got her wicket in that match. Almost turned around there. Eventually was able to keep her shape and keep that one out. Yeah, but Joseph has improved every game. You said she started out with a knot, then she got 20, or then she got 43. So she's been going in the right direction. Trinidad and Tobago women will be hoping that that can continue, especially in this very important encounter. Oh, big booming drive and a miss. Well bowled by Henry. She is getting this ball to talk quite a bit, getting it to swing away from the right hander appreciably and quite late. Yeah, really, I've been really impressed with the way Henry has started in this tournament with the new ball. It's getting movement and, and she's using it quite well. Has some pace about her also. A, she's a difficult customer to face early on in, in your batting innings. Yeah, clearly her shoulder has improved. Chanel Henry missed last year's tournament because she had to get a shoulder surgery. Cut uppishly, but to the left of the field at backward point, Natasha McLean does well running around from deep third, keeps it down to two. She is such a splendid fielder, Natasha McLean. She actually re reacted quite late to that ball coming down there. I was looking at her hair and I was like, Did, is she seeing what's happening? And then she was eventually able to get around and put a boot to it. So pretty good feeling there from Natasha McLean to keep it down to two. I thought it was going to crash into the boundary, but she managed to get her boot out and stop that. Yeah, I thought so as well until I realized who it was on the boundary. She's very good along the boundary edges, McLean. A dot to end the fourth. Turned down to Tobago women, seven for one. Vanessa Watts being replaced by Shadeen Nation. We did see her bowling the power play in that last game against Barbados women, Shadeen Nation, and she was able to take a wicket as, as well. And what stood out to me was, that, was the fact that she actually went to the captain. Starts with, with a wide. It's not the ideal start, but I think she went to the captain, Stephanie Taylor, and asked for the ball in that power play. So she's very confident in her bowling these days. It's 
And this is what I was talking about, about being stuck. You, you have to find the options. You must look around the field and find the options to score. So there was an opportunity to score. There was certainly an opportunity there. But going back to that game that Leeward Islands played against Guyana um, two nights ago, Devia Saxena, that gap right there is open. If the ball is turning, I don't think Nation will turn it so much. But once it's coming into you, there's an easy option to get a single or even two right there where the umpire is standing at square leg. So we've seen a number of occasions where the batters will just play really good shots straight to the feelers. Must find a way to keep the scoreboard ticking over. Ops for a sweet misses. Another dot delivery. So wide and then four dots. She's looking for that vacant gap that I just spoke about, but you also have to pick the right deliveries to go through that area. That one was a bit wide of off stump. And also a bit too full on that occasion. See, right there. That was perfect delivery to just get there, but young... Young Lena Scott, she's, she's pretty active in the field and she's able to get her wrong and stop it. But, but certainly an option from Brittany Cooper just to get it in that area there. There's two to be had if she gets it in that area with soft hands because the fielder isn't, isn't square on the boundary. She pulls this one to the left of Ferron running around from deep mid wicket and it's pulls it over. Ends with a boundary. Five from the over. It's too short there from Nation. And certainly a welcome boundary from Brittany Cooper. So I'm about to step out and you'll be hearing from Earl Smithen and Shakira Selman. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning, Shakira. Good morning, Earl. How are you today? Uh, not too bad, thank you. Uh, uh, probably... Not as good as the weather. <laughs> weather looking rather excellent at the moment. I heard mention of rain about uh, at the toss, uh, but I suspect that the weather is going to remain uh, fine throughout the day. Yes, cleared up a bit now. Remember, this game started 10 minutes late because of the rain that was around. But of course, if I know the conditions well enough, uh, that certainly seems to have cleared up considerably. Uh, and I do not think that uh, it would have any impact on this game. Uh, it would not have any impact on the pitch. But Jamaica, of course, they, they, they do like to chase, though. And they're opting to insert uh, Trinidad and Tobago. That's a lofty drive. Janaba Joseph, nowhere close enough to the pitch of that delivery. Fortunately for her, it falls well short of the fielder at mid on. Of course, both of these, these teams are coming off victories from the last round. Jamaica, unbeaten in the tournament so far, top of the table on 13 points. This time. She gets it, and she gets enough of it to clear Stephanie Taylor at mid-off into the boundary. That's a very good shot indeed uh, by Joseph uh, going over the top, over the top of Stephanie Taylor at mid-off, and uh, picking up a good boundary. Good shot. Yeah, on this occasion, this delivery was a bit fuller. You know? It was also a lot wider than the previous one that she attempted to hit over the top. So she's able to get her hands through that ball and lift it over the field at mid-off. And I just wonder what, wondered what Brittany Cooper was saying to Joseph two balls ago when she attempted that lofty delivery. Sent some aggressive intent in this final power play over. And you can understand it because they need to get a, res to a respectable score at the end of this power play and then be able to kick on when the field is spread. So you understand what she's trying to do. But I just wondered what Cooper was trying to tell her. It was almost as though she was telling her to keep batting. Just keep batting. Well... Uh, she responded by going over the top and uh, picking up four. Tries to go over the top again. This time she does not get enough of it. Kate Wilmot runs around from mid-on and takes a very simple chance. 
So obviously the instruction was to try and go over the top and try and accelerate a bit. And uh, of course we have seen teams uh, in this tournament so far struggle to get to uh, 120. And uh, of course uh, we have seen some low scores being winning totals also. Uh, but uh, the uh, Jamaica team picking up a second wicket. A second wicket be inside the power play. And uh, uh, at this point, you could say that the Trinidad and Tobago team is struggling a bit. Yeah, we continue to say that about this Trinidad and Tobago batting lineup in particular. 17 for 2 now after 5.4 overs. Janaba Joseph, the last batter, dismissed for just six runs. And it was a good adjustment on, in line and length by Chanel Henry. She was hit over the top two balls ago, over the field that made off. Then she floated up a delivery outside of Austin. This time, she bowls that one straighter and pulls the length back ever so slightly. Enough to lure Joseph into a drive. She's unable to get enough of it to clear the field that made on. Yes, good thinking there by Chanel Henry. Just to mention, of course, that uh, Trinidad and Tobago, they are second in the table uh, in terms of point standing. And if they can probably uh, beat Jamaica here today and maybe pick up a bonus point or two, they could probably go ahead of uh, uh, the Jamaican team. And what I will certainly do is keep the contest interesting. Leanne Kirby walks to the crease. And she's able to get off the mark with a boundary. Yes, we saw uh, McLean diving over the top of that one and the ball going down to, in fact, it's uh, Nation. Wait some, sorry, wait some. Wait some, sorry, a bit fooled by the broad rim hat. I know Nation likes to wear that type of hat. Yeah, just drifting onto the pads on that occasion, Chanel Henry. An easy way to get off the mark for Leanne Kirby. Then Kirby, of course, an aggressive player. And uh, she has picked up uh, someone so far. Uh, for the Trinidad and, and Tobago team in the uh, CG United uh 50 over competition. She she did fairly well in that competition. And uh, of course, an aggressive player with a good strike rate and they would be hoping that she gets off today. Yeah, we just saw on screen on Para Javi Prasad sing signaling the end of the power play. So at the end of that power play, Trinidad and Tobago will make 21 for two. Nine runs and a wicket coming from that last over of the power play sent down by Chanel Henry. Should the nation to continue? Teams, though, they, they have not been maximizing the uh, power play in this competition so far. Uh, just going uh, over uh, three runs for over and losing two wickets. Uh, not very good result there. Yeah, well, it's a lot better than they feared in that last encounter, Trinidad and Tobago women. They only got up to five for the loss of the same two wickets at the end of that power play <coughs> against Wingwards women. That was just over one run pull over. Very slow indeed. Short chance for Shadeen Nation. She's unable to get across because Leah Kirby held her ground. But Brittany Cooper continues to struggle with that shorter delivery. And uh, lucky uh, to get away with that one. Of course, uh, the non-striker has the right to uh, stand the ground. Yeah, just threw that shot way too early, Cooper. Results in a single brings Leanne Kirby on strike. Reminder that it is the end of the power play. So four fielders are allowed outside of the circle. Jamaica have opted to utilize just three of those four. Deep backwards, square, deep mid wicket, and long on. Slip remains. Of 
host nation being an off spinner, turning the ball into uh, the right handed batter. Opting to use the deep mid wicket and the uh, backward square along with the long on. But now we see uh, mid off retreating a bit into a long on position. This one immediately driven to the outfielder who was just sent back to the boundary. Slip has been removed and sent back to short third. Finishes with a dot, two runs from the over. Trained on a Tobago women, 23 for two. Yes, a good start there by Nation, just conceding two runs from that over. And uh, uh, Jamaica, of course, Wait. continues to uh, keep things tight here. Of course, they won the toss and inserted uh, Trinidad and Tobago. So, so far, their, uh, their plans have uh, certainly borne fruit. Match is coming up, of course, uh, the second match. Uh, Guyana will take on Barbados. Uh, speaking of Barbados, Shakira, uh, there will be a lot of concern about the uh, welfare of Connell. Yeah, um, Shamila Connell seems to have been cleared of the worst. You know, she was struck by a ball that was driven firmly back to her, struck in the head. Should have undergone some scans. Seems to have been cleared of the worst. So we are thankful for that. We assume. Saints down wide. She's replaced Chanel Henry, who's completed three overs. to hear Connell is recovered well. Other match, of course, uh, this evening uh, would be uh, the Leeward Islands taking on uh, the Windward Islands. Driven firmly to the fielder who's way off the boundary, Kanisha Ferron. <laughs> And it crashes into that deep cover boundary. Another four to Leanne Kirby. Wonderful shot indeed. Finding the gap well and going out towards uh, a deep cover. A rather straight cover. And uh, picking up four. Yeah, and just look at the where Leanne Kirby plants that left foot. She has no intention of hitting the ball <laughs> down the ground, getting anywhere close to it. She wants room. The room was given on that occasion. She obliged. Overcompensation, another wide outside the leg stump. It's a bit too straight there from where some. The four fielders in on the boundary are long off, long on, deep square leg, and deep cover. The deep cover has gone right back on the boundary after that four was struck. Another wide. Oh, no, perhaps it clicked the pad of Leon Kirby. Fortunately for Nisha and Wasom. That fine leg is in the circle. So she just needed to get some part of the bat on it. Miscommunication. Changes her mind early enough, Brittany Cooper. But another wide outside the life stump. Yes, yeah, she seemed to have lost her radar a bit. Uh, she seems to be getting a bit of inward movement, uh, but the angle is taking it down the leg side. And uh, perhaps her line also uh, is poor. 
And bowled in a number of whites. Yeah, Shadeen Nation has run all the way from Batward Point to give some advice to Waysom. And every other ball of this over so far has been a white, dot white, four white, dot white. So we can only presume this will not be a white. <laughs> now it'll be interesting to see just what the follow-up delivery is. Yeah, once again, we see some inward movement there uh, from Wissom, but this time starting uh, closer to the off stump. And uh, striking Kirby on the thigh. Yeah, Wilson just seems to fall away at the point of delivery. And then she pushes it into the batter. Right there. That's the reason. And it's a load of people. And given, yeah, Kirby, given LBW. So Wilson has made up for the number of extras she's bowled. And she's taken the wicket of Leon Kirby for nine runs. Uh, that was a fuller length delivery. But the question is, how much was it doing? Oh, that seemed to have been going down to me. But the umpire, of course, is in the best position to see. Probably have a look at it again. Yeah, either way, the most important person has adjudged the LBW, umpire Maria Abbott. Angled into the pads once more. So Ian Kirby looks to swing this one into the leg side. Low the peel by way some nothing from wicket keeper Rashida Williams, who was scrambling down the leg side to get that ball. But trained on Tobago women will lose a third wicket for just 30 runs. We some did come a little closer to the stumps that time, uh, but certainly seemed to be missing. But uh, umpire Abbott, of course, in the best position to see, and uh, she gave Kirby out, but uh. A good blow struck there by uh, Jamaica. We know that uh, Kirby could be very destructive if she gets going. Yeah, Shanice Pascal walks out to the crease at number Starts with a short delivery to Pascal Wilson, defended to Shadeen Nation at backward point. A dot to end it over, seven from it, and a wicket after eight. Trained down Tobago women, 30 for three. The nation will continue for a third over. It's about two overs for seven runs, nation. Short again. Cooper again fails to capitalize. Picks up the fielder at Short May Wicket in the Shan Waysom. Cooper, an experienced player, but uh, she seems to be having some difficulty uh, putting away bad deliveries. Yeah, she struggled with her timing today in particular. She's gone on a few long hops. She hasn't been able to score off them. She hit the one boundary, of course, at the end of Nation's first over. With the exception of that, she's mistimed a number of those short deliveries. Long off, long on, deep may wicket, and deep backward square, four fielders on the boundary. toss she's able to punch this one down the ground to McLean coming off the long arm boundary uh, nation bowling has seemed to have improved <laughs> over the last tournament uh, I remember last uh, tournament she uh, did bowl a bit uh, probably uh, further down in the in the innings and she bowled rather slow 
tries to cut her delivery that's way too full Shanice Pascal. But uh, uh, she's bowling with a bit more pace this year and they're varying quite a bit also. Another plan to miss outside of stump. Just one from the ninth over. Trained down to be a goal. I mean, 31 for three. Yes, another good over there for uh, Jamaica. Another good over by uh, Nation. And just one run coming from that over. One run from the ninth over. And this is pretty slow going here by Trinidad and Tobago. They have lost uh, three wickets, but they, they really need to step up a bit at this point. Yeah, just a touch on that point you were making about Shadeen Nation and her bowling this year. Last year, she would have perhaps been caught by surprise, given that Stefani Taylor struggled with a back injury throughout the tournament and could not bowl for this Jamaica side. So this time, though, Shadeen Nation has had enough time to prepare. And she also bowled quite a lot when she was in Australia a few months ago. Of course, she came straight from Australia and into this tournament. She sent down some very important overs for this Jamaica side this tournament. She got wickets last year as well. She's able she's been able to repeat that this year and she's been more economical. Kate Wilmot into the attack. Beats the outside edge of Brittany Cooper. Cooper has faced twenty one deliveries no for just nine runs. Could start by Wilmot. She did get some bounce here also. And uh, beat the outside edge of the struggling Cooper. Yeah she's quite tall. Kate Wilmot, the young West Indies prospect. She does get the ball to bounce quite appreciably. Shorter and guided to the right of Shadeen Nation of Batward Point. Ferron comes off the boundary. Two runs added to the total. Much better from Cooper being able to uh, find the gap and picking up two runs. And she needs to uh, use her experience here to try and accelerate uh, the scoring for Trinidad and Tobago. Probably uh, trying to rotate the strike, looking to uh, find the gaps and uh, looking to pick up singles also. Too many dot deliveries. Coming forward to another short delivery. This one a bit straighter. Only able to find the fielder at Sharp May Wicket. Yeah, she struggled to rotate the strike, Cooper. She's tried to hit a few boundaries, mistimed the deliveries. She hasn't been able to get the other batters on straight. 23 deliveries now for just 11 runs. Sharp swung away. Backward of square. Can't be the fielder on the boundary. Just one run. And it's deliveries like those that you will expect your experienced batter to be able to capitalize on. Yes, um, to put away. Uh, that should have been put away for four. Yeah, especially a barrel who's faced 24 deliveries now. But Bill Martin, the first over, started fairly well, though. Uh, getting a bit of bounce. Intentional short delivery on this occasion. Extra effort beating Shanice Pasco for pace. Three runs from Wilmot's first over. Real aggression there, real fast ball aggression there from Wilmot. As uh, uh, a drinks break is being taken, and we'll take a short break.
Welcome back after the drinks break. Brittany Cooper still struggling with her timing. That one was pretty slow from Nation. Got some bunks as well, so seen a fair bit of bunks off the surface so far. All? Yes, we have seen a bit of bounce and uh, Cooper though continues to struggle. She's uh, striking at uh, less than 50. Nice. Uh, pretty important that she stay there though. Um, it's 12 off 26 now, but so she has to take it to 20 overs. That one was struck nicely to the left of Henry, but he'll just get one. Yes, but uh, staying there is one thing, but eating up uh, deliveries and not uh, rotating the score is not uh, doing the training that cause any good. I think she needs to get a wiggle on at this point. She used the feet, but she knocked herself there. Pascal changing the field for her. Henry comes in the circle. Cooper Force not really picking up singles. And that, that's something we've noticed throughout the tournament in the middle period the batters they get stuck they're not to show how to go about keeping the scoreboard ticking over but certainly something that they have to work on going forward looking to play this one all quick single taken they get it comfortably in the end a bit of a fumble there from young Kate Wilmot Looking to sweep on that occasion, narrowly missing the stump. So a dot to finish, 37 for three after 11 overs. Yes, uh, <laughs> uh, 3.42, 11 overs gone. And uh, uh, Trinidad seems to be stagnating at this point. Uh, not really going anywhere. And uh, we know that there's a bonus point. If you uh, get to 130, uh, two bonus points if you get 250. But we are not seeing this happening in this, tourna in this tournament so far. Yeah, only one team managed to score over 130 batting first so far, and that was Leeward Islands in their first game. 139 to be exact. So Kate Wilmot will continue to Shanice Pascal. Leeward Shanty. Islands, sorry. Leeward Islands, of course, the team to look out for. Winwards look out this evening. <laughs> yeah, that's, that should certainly be a contest. <laughs> Indeed. So Wilma to Cooper. She's continuing with that short length to these batters. Use of the feet hit high in the air. There's a fielder coming around. And we some can't get close enough to take that catch. So Brittany Cooper trying something different. Looking to use her feet to the pacers. Didn't connect cleanly. Perhaps a shot in desperation. Her experience would tell her at this point that she needs to get uh, going. Needs to get this scoreboard moving. A safe shot in the end. Pretty interesting as she had tried to use her feet to Wilma. She has been bowling short of a length for the majority of her delivery. So I think the better option might be just to sit back and wait on her. Unless she tries something different. To use your feet against that sort of length. It's pretty risky. But Wilma to Pascal. Again banging it in. This time Pascal waits on it and just plays it out to deep square leg. Uh, yes, uh, perhaps what she should be looking to do uh, with that sort of length is to uh, try and work the ball in the gap and try to score off every delivery. Uh, I'm trying to pick up singles if the, uh, the ball is not there to be hit. Very difficult to charge that length. So, 
40 for 3, 70, 12 to over. After the power play, they were 21 for 2, so they've only managed to add 19 runs so far. If you take that delivery, for example, that should have been worked into the onside for at least a single, perhaps two, and uh, for an experienced player. It was a delivery which was rather straight, and uh, she took it on the pad. Short delivery, but a fortuitous edge there for Brittany Cooper, and she'll take those. So four runs to end the over, 44 for three. Well, so of course, she will not argue with such an edge. Uh, bringing a four, uh, bringing four to a team, and uh, four welcome runs indeed. So a change in bowling now on the commentary booth and Stephanie Taylor has the ball in hand. And it's a plan that the Jamaicans, um, it's, it's a plan that they're using the Jamaicans. I've noticed it from the first game. They've operated with a pacer from one end and a spin from the other. They continue with that here. Taylor coming into the attack from this end. Bit of width offered. Yes, they're, they're, they're not uh, getting the batters too accustomed to uh, a similar pace from both ends. And the spinners have been effective also. So one is hit in the air, and Henry will hold on to that. <coughs> so right away, Taylor into the attack, picks up the wicket of Shani's Pascal. Yes, a very good catch there by Henry. She had to cover some grounds, uh, moving into that one at mid-off. And they took it uh, low to the ground, held on to it. Uh, magnificent fielding indeed by Henry. Yeah, Pascal looking to go over the infield. She didn't really get close to that. She, she took her body away from the delivery. And in the end, just putting it in the air. A simple, simple catch in the end for Henry. She's a pretty athletic fielder. Yes, the, the weight for Pascal there being on the back foot instead of uh, transferring the weight onto the uh, front foot and trying to go over the top and uh, uh, being on the back foot there it was would be would have been very difficult to get that over uh, the top of mid off so the skipper walks to the middle Karishma Ramarak a team in a spot of bother there 44 for 4 in the 13th over she will need to pull something from the baggy here uh, needs a captain's knock. Uh, she not only needs to do, uh, score well, but uh, uh, score at a good rate. So Henry to Ramarak. So one is played nicely. Just helped it on its way. That should be four. Much needed boundary there from, Kar from Karishma Ramarak. Actually, actually, Nation did well to pull it in. I thought it was headed to the boundary, but Nation got there in the end. So a good bit of fielding from her. It was headed, but it seemed to have slowed up inside uh, the boundary. And then she was able to pull it back. Yeah, importantly, yeah, she didn't give up the race tracked it down and pulled it back in quite nicely in the end so it's just an adjustment in the field driven for me it's in the direction that ball went stephanie taylor just bringing nation a bit straighter so playing a miss there from ramara I'm wondering what sort of total Trinidad had in mind at the toss. 
when they were sent into bat? Well, you, 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 you are correct. Uh, you know, you wonder, and <laughs> obviously, it's played to the right of mid wicket, and this time it's a boundary. So Karishma Ramarak, she just came out and she's showing intent quite early. So six runs off that over, a wicket in it, and they are fifty for four after thirteen overs. Yes, in terms of the the, the total they would have been looking for, I, I, I'm sure that. When each team started the Saturday innings, they will be thinking in terms of 130, 140. Uh, but that only seems to be a thought. Uh, we are not really seeing the effort uh, being made by the teams to uh, get to such a total. There have been too many dot deliveries. And they're not working the ball into the gaps. They're not playing with soft hands. And they're not picking up singles. So Wilmot will get a third over. So coupon strike. This one a bit fuller this time. It's played to the left of the fielder. They hustle back for two. Get it quite comfortably in the end. Uh, 50 uh, coming up for uh, the Trinidad and Tobago team in just uh, 13 overs. Uh, they have now gone on to 52 for four. Uh, so rather slow going another six overs, overs after this it's bangs it in short of a length a bit of misfield from the keeper <coughs> both battles were good awareness shown by Ramarak to come through there to get a quick single by signal by umpire Maria Abbott so going at about uh uh, let's say 10 runs per over. Uh, they would be getting another 60 plus runs, which would take them just over 100. Uh, let's assume 60. That's 113 runs. And uh, we do not expect them to go at about 10 runs per over. So they might be falling below uh, 100 runs, the Trinidad and Tobago team. Do you think 110 will be a challenge in total to Jamaica on this surface? It shouldn't be, but you can never tell. Uh, Jamaica, uh, I, I find that their batting appears to be a bit top heavy. And uh, doesn't seem to have a very strong tail. It's played out to cover. A good diving stop there. Unfortunately for Watts. She's surely stopped the boundary, but we hustled through for a single. So Karishma Ramarak has actually been pretty aggressive since she's come out to bat, and she's striking the ball quite nicely as well. Yes, the timing yes. has certainly been on. Yes, yeah, certainly. When you look at the Jamaica's batting, it's uh, Rashada Williams, of course, uh, this nation, Maclean, uh, Taylor and Henry, but we have seen these players, uh, uh, some of these players being dismissed early in the tournament. Uh, so 110 would, would, would give Trinidad and Tobago a sniff. And the question is, how can they get to 110? It's played a wrong, but to third man. How can they get to 110 from here? They have six more overs to work with after this delivery. Cooper is still there. She struggled with her timing in this inning so far. Ramarak, Ramarak looks quite promising. So a lot will rely on her. And hopefully Cooper can find some striking form to take them to 100 and above. Goes over the infield. And that's another boundary. Karishma Ramarak turning it on here for Trinidad and Tobago. Well, that's one way of getting to 110. Uh, they need <laughs> uh, lots of boundaries at this point. And uh, the captain is leading from the front at the moment. 
So 59 now for four after 14 overs. In T20 cricket, of course, you, you cannot score runs unless you uh, you are prepared to take chances. And uh, Coop, of course, she's been there for some time. Uh, she needs to uh, take the initiative at this point. So Taylor, to continue to Cooper, looks to sweep. So that's a good option, a paddle sweep there. Some innovation showing from, shown there from Cooper. So if she's not hitting the ball well down the ground and you have those options, so if you have those options, certainly use them. So really good thinking there from Cooper. Yes, uh, this is what is required at this point by Cooper. She has been struggling. And, uh, she has bought out the paddle sweep and, and picked up two runs. And of course, the running at this point would have to be aggressive also. Ups to leave that one alone. Probably thinking it would have been called wide, but umpire Javed Prasad doesn't think that. So it's a dot delivery. Use of the feet slams it down the ground, but no power in that one. So easy walk there for Natasha McLean and the long on boundary. It's one thing she has to do also, or the batters would have to do also, um, use their feet and create uh, hitable lengths. Um. Can I just let the bowlers dictate to them? Overs are running out. We're in over number 15. Five after this one. Gets inside the line, walks it. Overthrown, but <laughs> won't result in a single. Skarishma Ramarak had to put in a dive to make her crease in the end. Could have been very interesting if uh, Taylor had struck. And, uh, good thinking there by uh, Stefani Taylor. Quickly uh, picking up on wheeling around and uh, trying attempting to throw down the uh, non-striker's stumps. Missed it completely at a, uh, from a short distance. Walks it across the line. It'll just be one. So oh, she's finding her time in here, Cooper. Striking it nicely to mid wicket. But it, there's only five runs in this over so far, though, with uh, five deliveries gone. So one more ball to go. Nicely played by Ramarakt. Ramarak to get it past that field at short cover. Over. The over is completed. Six runs off it. 65 for four. Yes, yeah, 65 for four. And uh, perhaps it's happy hour time for uh, Trinidad and Tobago. They really need to accelerate at this point. And they won't have a cho choice but to do that because... They know that this Jamaican batting unit, the way they've gone about things, the aggression they've shown at the top, and they do have batting from one to five, as you rightly pointed out. So they'll need to get a target of at least 110 or so. They do have a pretty good bowling lineup full of spinners, Trinidad and Tobago, but you have to give your bowlers something to work with. I welcome you back, Shakira Selman. Thanks, Stacey. 15 risk completed, Trinidad and Tobago women. 65 for 4. Run rate slowly improving. Projected score at this rate is 87. Vanessa walks back into the attack to replace Kate Wilmot from the far end. Deep backward square, deep mid wicket, long off, and deep cover. The fielders on the boundary. Start short. Pull work for Farron to do of the deep mid wicket boundary. They should push for two runs and they do so quite easily. Pretty good strike rate from Ramarak since she's come out to bat. 
He's striking it quite nicely as well. So certainly Taylor will be hoping for Watts to pick up a wicket in this over. See the back of Ramarak especially. Way too short again. Chance for Ferron on the boundary. She comes off the boundary and she takes a simple catch. Ramarak now gone for 15. Yeah, I mean, that was, that was, that was a, a half tracker, actually. Ramarak, she hardly put any effort into that. And just offered up a simple chance to Ferron on the boundary who takes it quite easily. Yeah, perhaps got under that too much from a rat hitting with the wind and to the well it's the longer end today because of the pitch they're playing on but she really got under that and helped it way too high and it was an easy catch by Ferron who did a bit of a celebration showing off the name on the back but yeah important breakthrough for Jamaica's side Vanessa walks back into the attack and she's able to make an impact immediately Train down to Tobago, we made now 67 for five. And this is what Jamaica and uh, with their leader, Stephanie Taylor, has done so well with their bowling attack. When you look at their bowling attack, they don't have a lot of variety. They have three half spinners and they operate with, you know, right arm seam bowlers. But they have found a way to, to curtail the, the scoring rate of other other teams in this tournament and it's mainly because of the way Taylor has used her bowlers and they, they, they've, they've found the bowling plan they've stuck to it and it's working out quite well for them just keeping things simple and it's paying off yeah certainly but also helped by the unforced errors of a number of batters in this competition Kirvina Alexander the hero in the last game for Trinidad and Tobago side no walks to decrease tries to get this one between backward point and short third. Good job by Shadeen Nation diving away to her left. And that was the best partnership that was just broken. Partnership yielded 23 runs between Brittany Cooper and Karishma Ramara. So it was a very important and timely breakthrough by Vanessa Watts. Should be an easy single. Good running by the two bars. Good communication. Again, she struggles with her timing. Cooper. There is a big gap between the fielder at backward point and extra cover. And after facing 39 balls, she still struggles to hit a short wide delivery in that gap. A single to end the 16th. Four runs and a wicket from it. Trained on a Tobago women's 69 for five. Fanny Taylor to continue from the middle center end. Uses her feet. Brittany Cooper crashed to the right of the fielder on the boundary. And for once, perhaps, in this entire tournament, Natasha McLean misfields. It's a boundary. Yeah, it took me by surprise there, actually. She made good ground to her right to cut it off, but it went through her legs. So a much-needed boundary for Trinidad and Tobago and Brittany Cooper. Can this... Can this bring a different side from Brittany Cooper? Can we see some much needed impetus added here from here on out after that misfield? Goes deep on this occasion, pulls it, but drops short of Ferran coming off the deep mid wicket boundary. Five runs from the first two deliveries of the 17th over. Can Alexander get? Brittany Cooper back on strike or hit a boundary. Projected score has gone up to 91.
quit single. Well done. She gets Cooper back on strike. And this is good from Corbina. She's looking to get off strike, on, uh, looking to minimize dots, more importantly. Because you don't want to get stuck here. You need to find a way to score off as many deliveries as possible, if not all. It's just three overs remaining after this one. Use her feet. Crashes this one straight back over the head of Stephanie Taylor. Excellent work on the boundary initially by Chanel Henry. Unfortunately for Jamaica, she's thrown it into the boundary. It's two fours struck in just three deliveries, four deliveries by Brittany Cooper. Yeah, and this is good from Brittany Cooper. Recognizing that she needs to put pressure on Taylor in this over, using her feet. And that was a good option going straight down the ground as well. So a good start to this over. Yeah, length is key. Length is key here. Can't get too full to Cooper, who's now decided to use her feet and advance to the bowlers. Steps across early, and she pulls this one, but straight to the field at deep backward square. Yeah, nice use of the crease. And I'm just thinking to myself, if Cooper had these options all along, why not go to them? We're seeing her now moving across her stumps and trying to to access the onside boundary. So it's over so far. I think we'll have to have a correction in the score, in the score card. Played nicely by Corbina Alexander, who again wastes no, ti wastes no time and gets off strike. The end of the 17th over. Now our score card is saying 79 for five. We think it should be 81 for five. That two was in fact a boundary. So it should have been 12 runs from that Stephanie Taylor's over. Very fuss while we try to get that ratified. Most expensive over of the innings so far. So what's to bowl out? Been economical in her spell of bowling so far. Starts with a dot to Kobe and Alexander. Another misfield by Natasha McLean. Ball spinning to her left allows the Bahers to cross for two easy runs. So a bit of a lapse in the field from Jamaican fielders. McLean again, surprisingly. Yes, and Trinidad, in the meantime, they're taking advantage of these lapses by Trinidad and um, by Jamaica. So another two. They're 81 for five now. Can they get to 100 from here? Corbina Alexander, she's five of six deliveries since her introduction. She's wasted no time. She's looking to get to minimize the dots as much as possible. Chance for the fielder running around from mid-off. Easily held by Nisha and Wiesem. A second wicket for Vanessa Watts. Corbina Alexander has to go. You cannot, you cannot blame her for doing that, Alexander. It's just two overs after this one, and she has to find a way to go. She has to find a way to keep scoring. Unfortunately, brought about her demise in the end. Easily catch, easily held catch by Nisha and Waysom. It's 81 for six. So, it's that young Ramna. Who opened the batting for Trinidad and Tobago in the 50 over version, batting at number 8 in the T20 version of things. And if Otif Ramnath instead of Shalini Sumaru, who bat at 3 last game, or Steffi Sugrim, who did well 2 games ago, with the bat. 
Of course, Ram Nath is very capable. As you rightly pointed out, she did open the behind for the Trinidad and Tobago side in the CG United Super 50 Cup. Just how quickly can she score? They're looking for at least a run of ball at the very minimum. She immediately gets all straight. So she does her job, Ram Nath. Yeah, interesting that they, they sent back long off for young Ram Nath, brought in long on in the circle. And for Brittany Cooper, they're bringing that long off back into mid off. They're sending mid on back to long on. So deep backwards career, deep mid wicket, long on. The three fielders on the boundary on the leg side. And deep cover on the off. Short. Unable to capitalize. And she's missed out on so many short deliveries, Brittany Cooper that you're perhaps inclined to see a good bowling from Vanessa Watts. <laughs> it's perhaps a bit wider than she intended, I'm sure. But Cooper hasn't been able to make the most of short deliveries today. Go short again. This time she's able to hit it to the left of the deep cover fielder. Ramnath looking for two. St. Bach, just one run to finish the over. So Watts has completed her spell, four overs. Three wickets for 10 runs, Vanessa Watts. And she has been the star so far. Um, 83 for six with two overs remaining. Stephanie Taylor to bowl the, ten the penultimate. Yes, Pat Shadeen Nation. Chanel Henry, forgive me, to finish things up. She bowled three in the power play. Henry uses her feet once more. Swings this one straight to the field at deep mid wicket. They cross for two. Good running by Ramnath. Yeah, that was the right option, looking for two, even if it resulted in the run out of Ramnath. Two overs remaining. Brittany Cooper, who has been there from the beginning, she needs to face the majority of these, these deliveries. So she manages to get two. They managed to get 10 runs off that last Stephanie Taylor over. Start with two so far of the first delivery. Yeah, good awareness by the youngster realizing that Ferron was lagging to get to the ball and then get her out of her hand. Sweets, but straight to Sharpman Wicket. It's also the bigger boundary today because of the pitch that's being used. But you're right. The main objective has to be to get Brittany Cooper back on strike. She uses her feet again to the left of the short May wicket fielder and in the gap for a boundary. Taylor under some pressure. Yeah, really good placement there from Brittany Cooper. Managing to get it past mid wicket and once it pass mid wicket in the circle, that gap is wide open. So much needed boundary. She moves up to. 41 now, Brittany Cooper. Score moves up to 89. Yeah, wrong option, I think, from Stefani Taylor. She's struggling with the shorter delivery. Pull your length back. Steps across early and sweeps this one to Ferron, who's quickly off the boundary on this occasion. Keeps it down to one. Two deliveries left. Does Ramnath go for a boundary or does she try to get Cooper back on straight? There's nothing to lose. Wait. Signal by Ampere Persaud. Stefani Taylor very disappointed with the call. It's a good call from Ampere Persaud. Yeah, she looks to go and she's been stumped. So looking to go, you were wondering what she would have been thinking, whether to go and get Brittany Cooper back on strike. Look to go, which I think is the right option. Just two more deliveries remaining in the over. Might as well have a go. Yeah, just drives out of the crease, trying to hit that ball down to the long one. Close the back face and she was beaten on the outside, edge of the back. Easy stumping chance for Rashida Williams. So Ranoff goes for just one. Trying down to be able to make now 91 for seven. So 
the new batter is Isaac. She has one delivery. She has to treat it, treat it as a free hit. Has to find a way to get a boundary off this next delivery so that Brittany Cooper can get the strike in the last over. Yeah, good call. You can only hope that the two batters understand that Cooper has to face the start of the next over. Tries to go. And they get a single. Not a bad result for Jamaica in the context of the game. So, end of, an, of the 19th over. Trinidad and Tobago, they are 92 for 7. Yeah, nine runs from that 19th over. Nine runs and a wicket, the wicket of Samara Ramnath. So 19 runs coming from Stefani Taylor's la two last two overs. Interesting. Yeah, she sank down four overs, got two for 31. Taylor, the most expensive bowler today. Brittany Cooper in particular took a liking to Stefani Taylor. Advanced on a number of occasions. And she was able to find the boundary especially in that area between long one and deep mid wicket it will be chanel henry to finish things up for the jamaican side she's sent on three overs got him one wicket for just 14 runs deep square long on long off and deep cover chance for a catch easily held by natasha mclean at short third kanisha isaac goes for just one yeah, with that catch taken, Chanel Henry now moves up the leaderboard in terms of most wickets in this T20 Blaze tournament so far. She's now up to eight. So Kanisha Isaac looking to go big. The most important thing is that Brittany Cooper is still not able to get on strike. And there are eight wickets down now. And it takes you back to the final ball of that over. Yes, Isaac was looking the previous over I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Isaac was looking for a boundary, but from the time they realized that it was not going to be a boundary and it was only going to result in a single, perhaps they should have turned down that single to see how costly, how costly that decision was. Yeah, sometimes it's pretty hard to gather your thoughts out there. You know, it's a T20 and runs are valuable. So you get one, you take it. But sometimes you have to think about the bigger picture and the bigger picture was keeping Brittany Cooper on strike for this over from Chanel Henry. Yeah, bring Shalini Samaru to the crease, the left-handed Samaru. She has five deliveries left. Turned out to be a woman, 92 for eight. Same few for her. Deep square, long on, long off, and deep cover. She's able to get off the mark and get Cooper on strike. And you think back to a few days ago when Wayneward Islands women were playing against Barbados women. And that, I think it was the last ball of the penultimate over. And it was an excellent save on the boundary by Zeta James. But what it did is it allowed Trishan Holder to get on straight for the final over. Which ended up being... Very expensive over. Very actually, expensive. actually, the best finish... In the last two overs I've seen from any team in the tournament so far, a lot of teams aren't able to capitalize at the back end, taking nothing away from the bowlers. Doing a, they're doing a, a pretty good job at the back end. But a lot of teams don't have a lot of options to go for. And why that was one of the best finish, finish in this tournament so far is because of the options that Trish and Holder was able to go to, using that scoop to perfection. Yeah, wide sing signal by umpire Abbott. Brittany Cooper stepping outside of Austin early, throwing the bowler off. Still four deliveries remaining. Cooper looking to improvise. Begin to paddle it around to the third man area. There's, there are no feelers back behind the wicket keeper. 
So indeed a good option. All the deep fielders out are in front of the batter, long on, long off, mid wicket and cover. This one's a chance for the fielder, Lena Scott, at cover. She's unable to get under it. Two runs added to the total. Cooper back on straight. Yeah, looking to go down the ground, Cooper. Going to time it properly. Manages to get a top edge that went high in the air. And Lena Scott probably had too much time. <laughs> she wasn't able to get in position properly. Not sure there's a strong wind out there that's taking the ball away. I'll have it, I'll have it swirling around. Yeah, she decided to pedal backwards, Lena Scott, and I think that's where she made the mistake. Would have been in a better position if she had gone side on and get under the ball. Another player in a miss, and they call, they call for the single. It's a good result for the Jamaica side by single by the umpire. There's one more delivery coming up now. It's been a pretty good battle between these two. Henry and Brittany Cooper. She, she didn't manage to take off her boundary in the over. So there was a single and offer there. Can't fault her for taking it in the end. It's one more delivery remaining. Can Samaru put it away for a boundary to get them to 100? Low full toss driven to the fielder coming off the boundary at deep cover. They were thinking about two. They side against it. So one run to finish the 20th over, Trinidad and Tobago. They have gotten up to 98 for eight at the end of 20. Jamaica women then will need 99 to take this game.
Welcome back to Warner Park in St. Kitts and Nevis. Contest between Trinidad and Tobago women and Jamaica women. Jamaica women won the toss, opted to bowl first, kept the Trinidad and Tobago side to 98 for eight in their allotted 20 overs. It means then that Jamaica women, they need 99 if they're going to take this game. And of course, once again, there's a cause for concern. Once again, we have seen a team batting for 20 overs and they're not getting to 100 runs. In fact, not getting to 130 runs. Uh, where, of course, they could have picked up a bonus point. The uh, story, the, the, the scoring rate has been rather low in this tournament so far. Steffi Sue Grimm to open the bowling for the Trinidad and Tobago side. Coming up against Rashida Williams and Natasha McLean. Single to start proceedings. And certainly, Sha Shakira, there must be cause for concern. Uh, the sort of scores uh, we see teams are putting up here in this tournament. Yeah, I completely agree with you. <coughs> and the chairman of Select Hers is here. So, too, is West Indies head coach and director of coaching. So, a number of people are watching this tournament. And it's not the sort of totals they would have expected to see, especially on good tracks here at Warner Park. seen a number of very tame dismissals across the tournament so far of course we are in round four of the West Indies women's T20 blaze only one team managing to surpass 130 runs the thing is uh you know teams uh, they're not just being bowled out they're, they're batting their 20 overs and uh uh, not really maximizing uh, the number of deliveries, too many that deliveries. This one crashed between cover and extra cover into the boundary. First runs for Natasha McLean. It's a very good shot indeed, uh, finding the gap and timing it well and uh, picking up a boundary. Yeah, Steffi Sue Grimm didn't back today for the Trinidad and Tobago side. She's back into the team, replacing Celine O'Neill. She missed out in the last game, said to have been carrying a niggle then. Captain Karishma Ramarat said that she is better today. She sent down a really good spell of bowling in the last game that she played. She seemed to have played that one into the boot. Uh, McLean hopping around. Yeah, Supreme bowling left arm orthodox around the wicket to the right-handed batters. Long one and deep mid wicket. The two fielders on the boundary. She'll be looking to just angle the ball into the batters and bowl very tight lines. Gives too much room on that occasion again. And the McLean's back speed is fast enough to send it past a diving cover for her second boundary. Good timing again there by McLean. And uh, not only timing it well, but finding the gap well. And uh, picking up another boundary in this over. And of course, speaking of selectors, we know that there's an upcoming tour for uh, the West Indies uh, senior women's team. Uh, uh, very shortly, they should be moving over to Pakistan uh, on a tour. And it will be interesting to see uh, what some of the uh, selectives would be. Yeah, that West Indies tour of Pakistan begins on April 18. They are supposed to play three ODIs and five T20s. Of course, five T20s is the norm now in bilateral series, but a key eye 
will be on these T20s and the T20s performances as the West Indies team prepares for that upcoming T20 World Cup that is to be played later on in the year in Bangladesh. Nine runs from the first over. Kanisha Isaac from the far end. Starts wide off the outer half of the bat and down to deep third. Should just be a single. Jamaica started well. Uh, picking up nine runs in the first over. And if they continue the bat like this, this match could be over in quick time. Isaac had a good spell in her last game against Wainwards. White again, mistimed by Natasha McLean. She sent down four overs and got one for nine. Kanisha Isaac just turned 31 on that day as well. So deep third, deep cover. The two fielders on the boundary slip in place. Punch firmly, but straight to Sue Grandma Estra cover. She's timing the ball very well, Natasha McLean. Immediately, slip comes out and goes into the cover area. Jamaica does not uh, have a big target. And Trinidad and Tobago would be looking to save runs here, but what they need to do, they need to uh, bowl Jamaica out. But then having said that, we have seen no totals being defended. Uh, uh, just on, on uh, Wednesday evening. In fact, uh, Thursday evening, we saw Lee was defending the low total. Yeah, we saw Jazara Claxton take a hat trick in that final over. And it was quite a modest total. Guyana seemed to have been cruising in that game until the final overs. But yeah, what's key is that this train down to Tobago so he gets into the middle order of this Jamaica side very early. We've seen a number of occasions, once they've lost the openers, they tend to slow down quite a bit. And then if they lose Stephanie Taylor, they really seem to struggle. Uh, yes, certainly. Uh, I would have mentioned earlier that the uh, batting for Jamaica seems a bit top heavy. And if uh, Trinidad and Tobago could pick up some early, we could see they could be in with a chance. Like yeah. I've said, we have seen 104 being defended by the uh, Leeward Islands. Uh, Jamaica, though, they would be looking to get a very good start here and put pressure on Trinidad and Tobago, looking to break uh, the back of this uh, chase. 11 without loss after two overs. So going to continue. Goes fuller, low the pew, but clearly missing leg. Yeah, you say top heavy, but they have five very good batters, very capable batters at the top of their order, this Jamaica say. The problem for them is that Nation hasn't scored in this version of the competition. McLean has gotten off to a pretty good start, but she hasn't carried on. Captain but has struggled a bit too. Stefani. Yeah, perhaps. But I, I, I wouldn't go as far as saying it's top heavy because when you're building your T20 side, you want at least five capable batters, perhaps six even. Ferron is behind at six, and she was opening the behind in the Super 50 Cup. And you're right, Shak Shakira, because uh, so often we have seen just one performance um, from a batter uh, win a ga T20 game. Yeah, 
this line seems to be troubling Natasha McLean. She was able to crash two boundaries into that cover boundary in Sugrim's first over. This time, Sugrim has adjusted quite well, and she's gone fuller and straighter, causing some issues for McLean, who continues to play around that front pad. He's getting a word of advice from Rashida Williams now. Seems to like it's short. Seems to be a good back put player, McLean. Shorter but straighter, so it tucks her up. A bit quicker also. Right up to the bat again. A maiden. The third over of this innings. Jamaica women remain on 11 without loss after three. Yes, so we're adjusting the line nicely there. Carrying it a lot fuller. And they're cramping. Uh, the, the batter who seems to like it uh, short uh, seems to uh, favor the back foot quite a bit. And uh, bowling a good maiden. So we've all we've discussed, what Jamaica said, and Stephanie Taylor in particular wants, is for her top five batters, if they're given all given the chance to bat, is to produce some runs consistently. Rashida Williams, of course, started off this competition with a half century, got to 52 of 35 deliveries. Then she got player of the match again against Guyana. It was a more conserved knock, but she saw the side across the line. Spinners have done well for uh, Trinidad and Tobago so far in this tournament. In fact, uh, in the last match we saw uh, Samaru picking up 3 for 14 from a 4 overs. And Ram Harat picking up 2 for 14 from a 4 overs. So I'm pretty certain as uh, soon as this power play is over, uh, we might see a full, fully fledged spin attack. Now, Ramara actually looks to be warming up. There are sharp mid wickets, so we may see the introduction of another spinner sooner than perhaps we expect. Of course, it probably depends on how Isaac goes this over. The early call for a single by Rashida Williams. Again with McLean on straight. Brittany Cooper moves from slip to cover. This one driven uppishly down the ground. No chance for the field out mid on. Third boundary for McLean. Yes, a, a very good shot indeed. Played straight in the air, yes, of course. Uh, but there, there was plenty of space there. And uh, struck down to the down boundary for four. Yeah, she struggled with her timing in that first over from Isaac. This time, she's able to time that one well enough to get a boundary. A bit of room given on that occasion. She's able to drag that one straight over the bowler's head. She's punched this one to the right of Alexander. And a deep cover boundary. Two runs added to the total. So good over so far for Jamaica. Uh, we've had a boundary in this over. And the in fact, we've also had two whites. Buckley seems to be a lot more comfortable, though, to the quicker stuff. As are most opening batters. 
McLean would have played a number of games for the West Indies side. And she bat at the top of the order for most of her career as well. This one hit over the top again. Pascal is trying to get under it. She cannot. One, two bounces. She does well to pull it back, Pascal. One run added to the total. It's a good shot over the top of uh, Midon. No chance here of pa Pascal uh, whooping in a catch. And uh, picking up some more runs there. Yeah, even if she doesn't hit the boundary, she just has to clear the fielders. So she just has to time it good enough to clear the fielders in the circle. Mid-on and mid-off are both in the circle. Optimistic appeal heading down the leg side. Dot to finish. Jamaica women 21 without loss at the end of four. Yes, the starting well, Jamaica women. Uh, of course, it's a small target. Uh, they need just some uh, uh, 99 runs and the starting well. But so often we have seen teams starting well, getting a good start and then losing wickets and then folding quickly. Guyana is a good example of that on Thursday evening. But we are seeing the bowling change anticipated. Interesting that Ramarat has come from this end, probably because that's the bigger boundary now, playing on the pitch furthest left of screen. So she's replaced Steffi Sue Grimm, who's gone for nine runs in her two over. Importantly, her last over was a maiden. Deepman wicket and long on the boundary. Starts full and straight, clearly heading down the leg side. Yes, missing, missing leg by quite a bit. Probably hitting fifth stump. Crashed between mid-off and extra cover. A fourth boundary for Natasha McLean. That's the power of McLean. It really strikes it hard. And she just has to be given... A small bit of room outside our stump. The first one was straight, crashed into the pads. She missed out. This one was just outside of our stump, well flighted. And she's able to bludgeon it between the field that extra cover and mid off. Extra cover comes a bit straighter now, goes right back on the circle. Very good cricket. Excellent cricket. More of what you want to see from Bahers. Hit a boundary, look to get off straight. Yes, and uh, the, uh, working it into the gap, it was uh, to the left of that short backward square and uh, gave her enough time, gave the batters enough time to pick up a run. And this is what we were not seeing from the uh, Trinidad to bigger batters early run. Namara opts to go around the wicket to Rashida Williams. Her length is going to be important. Rashida Williams can sweep. Expected. She has to go a little bit shorter so Williams is not able to sweep. She has sent that field that deep may wicket a bit squarer on the boundary. This one is full of a lot wider. Table leaders, of course, battling it out, battling it out here. Jamaica in the top position. Five runs from um, Ramarat's first over. Jamaica women 26 without hey, law.
double change for Trinidad and Tobago. Samara Ramnath comes into the attack to replace Kanisha Isaac. Ten runs from that last Isaac over. Deep may wicket and long on the boundary. Solid start here for uh, Jamaica. Yet to lose a wicket. Long on comes into the circle. Deep backward square on the boundary. She sweeps immediately. This is the sweet shot I was talking about. She works very hard on being able to play this sweet shot, Rashida Williams. But good catch and see by Karishma Ramara, knowing the batter. Of course, both of them play for West Indies together. Long on back on the boundary from McLean. Square leg in the circle. Short pull behind square. Work for Isaac to do. She cannot keep it in. Too short. Too short. Much too short. And uh, uh, for McLean, this is... Uh, a meat and drink. Uh, she pulled it away for four. Yeah, the slow pace of that delivery also allowed Natasha McLean to get into position quick enough. Uh, the water park tracks have been very good batting tracks, and it, it's, it's surprising that we, we have had such a number of low scores. Credit must be given once again to the groundsmen here at Warner Park in St. Kitts. They've produced very good pitches for cricket. Pitches which should have resulted in a very high scoring affairs. I'm off just dropping a bit short once more. Of course, Shakira, the cliff of these pitches comes from Nevis. Uh, the uh, sister island, of course, one federation. It's very difficult to find the type of clay here in St. Kitts uh, to create good pitches. So normally uh, they bring it over from Nevis. Yeah, good bit of education given to us <laughs> by Earl. And he <laughs> said that with a smile on his face. So we can assume he is from Nevis. I am from Nevis, <laughs> <laughs> Shakira. <laughs> but I've lived most of my life in St. Kitts. Yeah, but the, the type of clay you would find here in St. Kitts would be a sort of reddish clay with, which uh, breaks up quite easily and uh, not ideal for, uh, for pitches, pitches. So you, you, you would find practically all the pitches around St. Kitts uh, would have been... Uh, put together with clay from Nevis. You want in St. Paul's, for example, uh, the clay is from Nevis. The end of the power play, Jamaica women 33 without loss. Trinidad women were 21 for two at the end of their power play. Off the outer half of the bat to the left of backward point results in an easy single. So perhaps we need to get some clay from Nevis sank around the Caribbean <laughs> so we can see pitches of this sort. Well, uh, uh, that could be a good, a good uh, income owner for Nevis. <laughs> 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 yeah, but certainly uh, based on what we have been hearing, some of the uh, pitches in the Caribbean are below standard. And yeah, hopefully we'll see an improvement with that ICC T20 Men's World Cup coming up in June. Remember that World Cup starts from June 1st to June 29th. And you can get your tickets online at tickets.t20worldcup.com. The tickets will also be on sale at venues across the region for the group stage games, the Super 8, and the semifinals. Driven up officially but well short of the fielder who is on the long arm boundary. Shakira, of course, you've been a World Cup winner. 
course, um, 2016 was a memorable year for the West Indies. Yeah, certainly for all West Indians. West Indies on the 19 boys won the World Cup. West Indies women won the World Cup. And right after, West Indies men won the World Cup. And remember being in the stands watching the West Indies men. But nothing beats that feeling, winning the World Cup, especially winning against the mighty Australians. Yes, certainly. <laughs> I would, could imagine. And uh, uh, certainly uh, there, was, there was full support uh, you lose her feet and swung away. It could go all the way. One bounce in front of Square into the boundary. McLean moves on into the 30s. McLean is intent on finishing this as soon as possible. And uh, she's not going to allow Trinidad and Tobago to uh, get into this game. And. Uh, uh, Trinidad and Tobago would be hoping that they get rid of her uh, uh, as soon as possible. Yeah, she never quite got close enough to the pitch of that delivery. I think when she advanced, initially she wanted to hit it down the ground. But realizing that there was no field at deep square, it was easy for her to swing it around and drag it in front of square. Drives this one again, but straight to the fielder at deep may wicket. So good batting by McLean. Seven from the seventh over. Jamaica women, 40. Without loss. And Shakira, the question has been asked, uh, what was the most memorable moment of the 2016 World Cup? I'm pretty certain that you, you would have had uh, several memorable moments, but uh, what was the most memorable moment for you? It's hard to narrow it down to one moment. Of course, when we were able to win that semi-final against New Zealand, we were head over heels. Now, of course, we knew we had to take on the mighty Australians, but we were confident because of the way that we beat the New Zealand girls. And then I remember during that game, didn't play, actually was injured. I remember during that game, the Australians were on top. But then the last over sent down by DeAndre Dotton swung the momentum back into our favor. And the way that Haley Matthews, Stephanie it, Taylor, they were able to take the attack to those Australian bowlers and put them on the back foot. And then we were able to get across the lane. I will never forget it. We were all sprinting onto the field. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I saw that, of course. And, of course, uh, our supporters here in the Caribbean would have been glued to their TV. That's certainly a moment that we hope we can see once more. Pulled through my wicket and into the boundary. And Natasha McLean is in a hurry. She moves on to 37. Can't stop shortly. Can't stop shortly. She didn't need some room. Just dropping short on this occasion. McLean getting into position very early. So pressure on the train down at Tobago side. You no. Know, Ramarat is looking for fielders to cover that leg side boundary. She ought to move from short mid wicket to a very straight deep mid wicket. Long off is asked to come into the circle at mid off. The fielder behind square on the leg side at the 45 has gone to short mid wicket. So lots of changes. What they need to change is the length they're bowling to McLean. Short again. And this time it's through the all side. So toying with the field, McLean, and well in control of this chase. Not a good shot there by McLean. Yeah, it is short, but not exceptionally short by the bowler. What she's do, doing is she's getting onto the back foot well and they're really uh, creating length, making it even shorter uh, than the bowler is delivering. And uh, as you said, time with the field, one through mid wicket, one through cover, uh, consecutive boundaries. Yeah, clearly, she has the ball fuller still. She goes faster, swung away, chance for the fielder at deep square leg. She does well, Brittany Cooper almost overrunning that. She's able to come up with a catch. McLean gone for 41. Yes, almost overrunning, but then uh, uh, just uh, more or less stopped in a track and uh, took a very good catch. Very brilliant bit of fielding there by uh, Brittany Cooper. And uh, uh, we could come in at a point where McLean was really running away with things here. It's now 48 for one. And McLean going for uh, 40. 
one well played runs but uh really a good knock there by mclean in fact uh, 41 from 48 doing the bulk of the scoring and uh williams just getting five from 12 deliveries uh so wonderful knock indeed uh by mclean yeah she walks off looking a bit disappointed but she should be happy with the job she was able to do for her side she's perhaps disappointed that she wasn't able to put that away and get it into the gap between the Fiora deep square and deep backward square picked out Brittany Cooper but she she's done the job for her team she's got her 41 from just 48 runs Rashida Williams just five of 12 deliveries so she's done her job sure she wanted to get to 50 but she's gotten them off to her flyers they just require a further 51 Samaru has gotten a wicket after being struck for two boundaries. What uh, nation is in now? It's a glim of a hope here for Trinidad and Tobago. And if they can go bang bang, who knows? Yeah, they will need to go bang bang. It's a very good start by Jamaica side. Sweep shot, fancy fielder, who's just been placed behind square in the circle. Samara Ramnath. Kirshma Ramnath has brought herself into the circle as well from a deep mid wicket to short mid wicket. Just three fielders in the deep. Dot delivery to finish. So eight runs. And a wicket from Sam Rue's first over Jamaica women for the eight for one at the end of eight. Contest between Jamaica women and trained on a Tobago women. Jamaica women need a further 51 runs to win this game. Just in pursuit of 99 for victory. I have a bit of a pause. It looks as though Rashida Williams is being tended to by the physiotherapist. Probably a bit of cramps. Whatever it is, they hope that she'll be okay. She's an important hog in this Jamaican Bahi lineup. Rashida Williams should have kept 20 overs before this. Just faced the 12 deliveries. But 8 overs has, have been sent down. So she's been out here for a while, Williams. Looks to be a bit of a back problem. A chance for the train down to be able to say to regroup and come up with a plan. In fact, they're just... Uh uh, four players in a group along with the coach, but uh, the other players in the outfield. But Shakira mentioned beautiful St. Kitts Nevis. I know you have been in the Federation quite a number of times. I suspect too you would have visited Nevis on a couple of occasions. Yeah, I've been to St. Kitts and Nevis a number of times. I think the first time being back in 2010 for a series against the England women's side. I think it was 2010. And I also visited Nevis, I think only once though. And that was two years ago during the CPL that was hosted here. Yeah, but very beautiful place. Very popular tourist destination. Rashida Williams is back up and ready to face Samara Ramnath, who switched ends, replacing her captain, Karishma Ramnarap. Bit 
the changes being made to the fuel. Just a message to bring the fuel off the boundary, uh, deep covering into the circle. Perhaps try to exert more pressure on Rashida Williams. Start slow and wide. And it's hit between that fielder who's just been brought into the circle and extra cover. They cross for two runs. Good running by these two. Something we always expect whenever Shadeen Nation is at the crease. She, also, she always puts pressure on the fielders. Perhaps never should have been two runs. No, it shouldn't have been, but uh, the fielders are perhaps moving a bit sluggish after that one, and uh, they capitalized and picked up uh, 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 the extra run. But speaking of running, the we have seen some poor running in the tournament so far. Chance for the fielder at Sharpman Wicket. Just over her head, Steffi Sugrim. Single added to the total. One got the impression that she moved rather slow to that one. Must, must, might have picked it up a bit late, uh, but could have gotten closer to that one. Also remember, she's now back into the side after Miss Not the last game due to a niggle. So she could still be carrying that niggle, Sugrim. Shirt, top edge, chance for the fielder who does not opt to come off the boundary to take the catch. One bounce to her, should the nation off the mark. Was in there for quite some time. Uh, perhaps misjudged. Looks like Pascal down there on the back of the square boundary. Yeah, she did move quite late to get off the boundary, Shanice Pascal. Swept top edge again. Spins to the right of Pascal coming off deep backward square. She does well. Another run added to the total. Jamaica women 53 for one. With two balls remaining to complete the ninth over. Jamaica on uh, 13 points. If they win here, they would go to at least 17 points. With one match to play. A bit of turn from around now. Takes the inside edge of the back of Nation. Two runs to finish the ninth over. Jamaica women move up to 51, 55 for one, in fact. Uh, so with one match to play, uh, in fact, each uh, team would be going into the uh, final round with one match to play. And uh, if Jamaica uh, win here today, it's very likely that they would be completing the double. Uh, they, of course, would move on to some 17 points minimum. If they do win. Yeah, it's likely, but not a foregone conclusion. Because if they lose that last game, and somehow Leewards are able to win tonight and then win their last game with bonus points, they can take the championship. Remember, Leeward Islands have been the surprise package in this tournament. They've moved from never winning a game in the West Indies women's senior competition to winning two games, defeating Barbados and then Guyana. Certainly, I did not look at it that way. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps, uh, and uh, Lee was, of course, playing the Windward Islands later on. <laughs> so who knows? It could keep this competition interesting. <laughs> but it's good, though. It's good. It's good to 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 know that uh, uh, we could go into the final round. Uh, with possibilities of of uh, some other team coming out on top as opposed to just um, one team going all the way. Struck firmly down the ground, straight back over the bowler's head. Rashida Williams joins the party. It's a good shot. Um, Struck straight. 
and over the bowler's said using the aerial route and they're picking up an easy four yeah good manipulation of the hands to drag that one from outside off stump straight back over the bowler's side she moves to double figures 13 no williams What she has been doing though with the departure of uh, McLean, she has been playing a bit more shots and she has uh, upped her strike rate a bit. So she seemed to have taken over from uh, McLean. Yeah, they're currently scoring at above six and over. So if they continue at this rate, they will get the bonus point. I suspect too that they would have an eye on that bonus point. And perhaps as they get closer with wickets in hand, uh, we could see further acceleration in the scoring. Quick single. Easily done. Fielder opts not to throw the ball. down the ground to the fielder at long on fumbles it does not cause any harm so we are at the halfway stage in this chase by jamaica women they are 62 for one in pursuit of 99 for victory Well, welcome back here at Warner Park. And uh, uh, 
Now Jamaica in a very good position. 62 for one from 10. Uh, welcome back, Stacey Ann. Yes, Jamaica. Probably looking to get that bonus points as well. They'll have to do it in about three or so overs if they are to pick up another bonus point. But the most important thing is winning this game. They are in pole position to do that. Bowling change from the media center end. Uh, C.A. Paul, uh, media center end. As Alexander is being brought into the attack. C.A. Paul Sokol, of course, uh, Stacy Young was from was from Dominica originally and uh, Premier of St. Kitts Nevis for a short time until he uh, died suddenly in St. Lucia. And uh, that's uh, a long time ago, way back. And of course, he was very much involved in sports. He was a cricket commentator, of course. And uh, the facility here, the media center being named after uh, C.A. Paul Southwell. Oh, condolences to his family. So, after the drinks break, Ashida Williams, who moves up to 131 runs in this tournament, leading the chart by some way. Single to start, Kobina Alexander, the new bowler. So Alexander, uh, she has a very packed offside field. Driven in the air, air usually, just a single to the right of Gaz of uh, Ramnaf. Yeah, falling just short of Young, well Sugrim. Sugrim, there, in fact, uh, at extra was cover. That short extra cover. But it's a very packed offside field. There's a third man, a backward point cover sweeping. Uh, extra cover. In fact, uh, cover. Extra cover mid off. So there are two covers one short, one sweeping, more cover point. Interesting field. On the onside, there's a short mid wicket and a deep mid wicket. And there's also a uh, long on. I'm surprised that Sugrim actually didn't bowl more overs in the power play. She, she usually, that's the biggest impact that she, she makes, bowling in the power play. She has squeezed the batters in the power play in that last over against McLean. She did go for nine runs off her first, but she bowled a maiden to follow up. Driving down to uh, Cooper Langan for a single. And why I made mention of that, Sugrim, she missed out in the last game, but prior to that, she had bowled 10 overs, she had bowled 7 overs, sorry, for 10 runs and picked up the one wicket. She isn't picking up the wickets, but she's certainly creating pressure with that balls. Certainly, there, 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 there's not been too many dot balls in this inning so far. is driving at a delivery outside the off stump and missing and three goes to the keeper so just uh three runs from uh come back over there by alexander yeah so sugrim as i mentioned in the first game she bowled three of us didn't pick up a wicket but just went for four runs and in the second game she bowled her full quarter of overs went for six runs and she picked up that wicket well, she seems to be back in the attack now. Uh, she, she usually makes her impact early on. So it'll be interesting to see how she goes here after the power play. Well, after 11 overs has been bowled to two set batters. I'm sure Trinidad and Tobago, the captain, would be hoping that uh, she pick up some wickets here. 
Yeah, so I mentioned that she creates pressure by building dots, but it, uh, from a Trinidad and Tobago point of view, they'll be hoping that she can pick up wickets. It's, that's the only way they they can get back into this game. So Williams is missing a, a full pitch delivery outside the off stump <laughs> and uh, uh, missing out that time. Uh, not the ideal start. Lucky to get away with that one, Sugrim. Palms might be a bit sweaty at this point. It's rather hot out there. But this is better. A bit straight, uh, but on the pads and worked into the onside. Of Whit Barford played delicately past Todman who pulls it in so they'll get two. Notice she, she's tried to play that shot quite often with Shayla Williams, but prior to this innings on that occasion, she connected well and picked up two. Yes, two, two more to the score, two more to Williams. One played up to extra cover. Ramnath is fielding, no run. Quicker delivery. This time played to mid wicket, a bit straighter. And that's how she stifles the batters. Sugrim. It's all about the angle for her. Comes in with the arm and she attacks those stumps the farm ball of course quick delivery also not flighting it and uh, ends a good over just two runs from that over but uh jamaica still ahead yeah pretty tight over but jamaica they know that they are in full control of this game, just one wicket down. one is pulled powerfully to the right of the fielder and she that will crash into the boundary so four runs to nation she's quite prolific on the pull shot she the nation yeah so a good boundary there for uh nation and a good boundary for jamaica and uh, uh just the mid wicket uh, back on the boundary on the on side there's no one at square leg it's a pretty packed offside field as I speak there, Karishma is making an adjustment. She's sending back the deep square leg. And in fact, uh, taking out the uh, short backward screen, going into a short mid-wicket. Uh, so there's more protection on the onside. Uh, there's a square leg back on the boundary mid-wicket and a long one. This one is short though and punched into the offside can't yeah. score i mean as a captain <laughs> almost a nightmarish delivery there you make the adjustment in the field she owes no on the offside a bit too short luckily for her there was protection enough protection after she just came out from that area on the offside almost crashing it through the offside boundary this time too much width diving stop there well diving effort from samaru there is someone on the cover boundary so just one uh, yes of course there, there's someone on the cover boundary but uh if the batter could place that uh between that short cover and the extra cover it would easily run away to the boundary for four uh, so still the ball has to be weary, weary of a length and too short this time 
and it goes up to cover so it was short and wide and uh, just a single to Williams Rashad Williams who's moved into the 20s uh, 73 another 26 runs needed and we're over number 13 Short again. This time the batter is on to the back foot and uh, playing down to uh, Kirby. That to finish. 13 overs bowl. Jamaica, 73 for one. Monday, of course, being the last day of this uh, tournament. Uh, to the Saturday being the penultimate day. So, bringing the changes, Captain Karishma Ramarak, she's decided to come into the attack. So, one over for Sugrin. She's searching for a wicket. Three fielders on the onside boundary. Deep fine, long on and mid wicket. There's just three fielders being used out of the circle. She's swinging this one out towards middle kick. Just a single. Searching for wicket, you said, but uh, no slip in place. Then the question is, uh, how are you going to take a wicket at this point? Yeah, that is indeed the question. How is she looking to get the batters out? Certainly not by strain on the pads. As it's worked down to uh, find make for an easy single. Oh, the position they're in, I am always for tightening the field. It's less than six runs per over required at this point in time. And they're going to do it in singles in any, in any case. So just tighten the field a bit, as you mentioned, get a slip in also. Force the batters to go over the top. See the top edge here. Uh, perhaps coming from body. We'll wait and see the signal from the umpire. In fact, it's a leg by. And the one more to the score. Yes, uh, I, I do agree with you, Stacey. Tighten the field. Force the batters to go over the top. Uh, force them to take risk. And not give them easy singles. And of course... Uh, putting a slip in place. They cannot defend these runs as this one is driven up too long and for a single. They cannot defend this run, these runs. The only way they can uh, win this match is by bowling Jamaica out and just one wicket down. Well, now we see. Uh, long on being brought in inside the circle. Mid off is inside the circle also. Yeah, you see right away she, the batter creates an error. She looks to go down the ground, gets an inside edge that, that passes Pamaru, who should have done better there to stop that from going for a single. But right away, bringing the two feelers in the circle, you see a different mindset being created by the batter thinking she should use her feet and go down the ground. Yes, and uh, we just saw uh, Pascal retreating to Longan, but being called back in by the captain. Uh, so thinking in terms of uh, trying to get an error out of these batters wide, uh, as this one goes down the onside. Twenty-one required. 
fact, the score is 17-9, so it should be 20. So a dot to finish, but six runs coming off that over to make a 79 for one. As we look at a few spectators and uh, looking on at this, at this game, today of course being Saturday, uh, not a working day here in St. Kitts for most people, so unless you're working in a supermarket or an essential service worker. Government offices being closed and uh, all banks uh, being closed, including the uh, Central Bank, of course. Samaru picked up that wicket of Natasha McLean. She has five wickets to her name in this tournament so far. Looking to add another here. Trinidad and Tobago, they certainly need to be picking up quick wickets from here on out Samaru. Jamaica firmly in control of the game so. uh, this one seems to have turned into uh, Williams who played it well in the end down to short third man for a single uh, but speaking of Samaru in the last match against the win which she picked up uh, 3 for 14 from uh, 4 overs and uh, Three of those five wickets coming in that match. This one is steered down to a uh, third man going down towards the boundary. Uh, just two runs there to a uh, nation. The nation got in position to pull. Got a healthy edge that ran away. That ran close to the third, deep third boundary. Now they decided to put short third in the circle, moved her from short fine. Misses one outside the off stump. to tug into the onside but uh, flat batted it uh, down to Kirby at mid off this time in it completely this time she's looking to steer down to third man and uh, missed it completely Sun going on the cloud. Slightly overcast at the moment. Overcome stone end. Uh, just uh, three runs in that over. So Trinidad and Tobago tightening up a bit, but. Perhaps a case of too little, too late. And we have had some 15 overs completed. So another change. Ramnath into the attack now. You see them trying things, Trinidad and Tobago, bringing in the field. Rightly said, it's a, it seems a bit too late now. Just 17 more. Required. So lots of deliveries to do that. Steered down to short third man, quick single. And uh, they're home. What Trinidad and Tobago, though, seem to have done is to deny uh, Jamaica that batting point. Bit short 
cut nicely into the gap. Don't think it will run into the boundary. But plays nicely. Janaba cleans up. They're looking for a third. A bit of confusion, but they get it easily in the end. Yes, uh, thrown out a very strong one. In fact, it uh, got as far as uh, the captain Ramnath, uh, who is a short extra cover. And the batter sees the opportunity to go through for a third run. So good aggressive running. Seem to have winded Rashada Williams a bit. Uh, but she's ready to go again. Steps out and plays it down. Uh, in fact, it's dropped down to mid on. And Pascal put it down. Yeah, Rashada looking to get on with it. She, she, she has gone down early in the innings. Physio had to come out to give her some therapy. So she is struggling a bit with her pairs, especially with her running. Paddles that one fine. And then Faka uh, completes that thing by walking through. But that seemed to be a, a, a bit of a tide looking shot down to mid on. And that timing it well. Well, this is what Trinidad had to do earlier in the innings. They were allowing them to get that easy single down the ground all the time. We saw two attempts that were missed by Williams to go down the ground, almost getting the wicket on that occasion. So what they needed to do earlier is what they're doing now when it seems a bit too late. Well, of course, when you know that you have to bowl a side out, if you, you have made a low score, you, you certainly would have to be uh, tight. You, earlier on, you, you have to be looking for wickets, driven nicely. Uh, but yeah, yeah. down there by by uh, Alexander and uh, no run. So sixteen gone, five from it, eighty seven for one. I think the uh, Trinidad and two big bowlers they were guilty of bowling uh, poorly in the opening burst. So another change by Captain Ramarak Sugrim now. Finish of full quarter of overs. He's bowled three overs for 11 so far. Still searching for a wicket. That's an attempted drive here by Williams. Misses it completely. The keeper misses it. And it runs away for four buys. Uh, so down to single di digits now. Needed by Jamaica. Now we see the captain is asking Cooper to come in the circle. So it could very well be over in this over. Another eight runs needed. Just two hits. Down to mid on, no run. So they need to score these runs in the next three balls to get a bonus point. Jamaica are still in with a shout. A delivery. If sorry, I wonder if they are aware of that. Well, not anymore, no, because a 16.5. 16 not sure if they are. So two boundaries can get them to that bonus point. That, that's what they need, actually. Two hits. A six or and a couple. Or two fours. Maybe two sixes. <laughs> Steered nicely down towards the third man boundary. I don't know if it has it. In fact, it does. 
Yes, delicately played there by Williams. We've seen her attempt that shot on a number of occasions. This time, she gets it fine, and it runs away for four. So, uh, four needed. Four also needed to get from this, uh, this upcoming delivery to get a bonus point. Are they aware of it? I feel you now that shot fine is straighter. Looks oh, God. Looks to go over the top and finish things off, Williams. So maybe they were aware of it, but couldn't get the height on that one to go over the feeler in the circle, and she perishes. Yeah, so uh, she's on her way, uh, caught, and uh, the feeler there looks like uh, Joseph, uh, who took that catch, uh, took it well. Uh, Rashad Williams goes back for 29 from 40 deliveries. Uh, seems to be seem to have been struggling a bit though. And perhaps carrying a bit of an eagle. Yes, 29 for 40. She is the lead our uh, 40 delivery, sorry. She is the leading run scorer in the T20 Blaze format. It's just four more runs required now. Captain Stefani Taylor out in the middle. The Sugrim getting a wicket. The second wicket in the tournament for her. Has been has proven to be one of the most difficult bowlers to get away. So four still needed by Jamaica. The captain is there. Stefani Taylor. Just two wickets down. So just one fielder out. Feel that mid wicket. Every other fielder in the circle. There's also a fielder on the uh, backward square boundary. Uh, so the over comes to an end. A successful one there. Four runs on a wicket uh, to Sugrim. Captain comes back, Ram Harak comes back from the far end. You now we've spoken about how we mentioned the term top heavy. Shakira Selman, top heavy for Jamaica, Shakira Selman mentioned that. You know, in this T20 format, you just need about five decent batters. And that's, that, that is such a true statement. With having just five batters at the top, five key batters, not saying that the other persons in the lineup are incapable, but these five have a lot of played nicely. That'll be four runs and that'll end the game. So I can't finish my point. So that'll be four runs to Shide Nation and four runs to finish the game off here for Jamaica, who did, did it quite comfortably in the end. But I'll just finish off and say, having five batters at the top, they have a lot of experience. And with five batters, five key batters, I should say, they all know their role, they, and they play their role quite well. So it works out quite well for Jamaica in their team dynamic. With just five exceptional batters at the top, I should say, with a lot of experience. Yes, certainly. And uh, there you had it, uh, Jamaica winning uh, this one by eight wickets and uh, uh, chasing a total of uh, uh, 99 to win. The Trinidad and Tobago team, of course, uh, just scoring some 98 runs earlier on. And Jamaica chasing that down quite easily, uh, losing just the two wickets. And uh, we'll be back here. A little later on, uh, uh, to bring you the second match of the day. Of course, there are two other matches uh, scheduled for today. We have 
uh, at 7 o'clock this evening, the Greenwoods coming up against the Leeward Islands. But uh, before that, we do have Guyana coming up against uh, Barbados. Uh, so until we rejoin you later on, uh, it's goodbye from Warner Park. <laughs>